Uh, our next speaker is Ulrike Fischer. She will be very well known to many of you from her activity on Stack Exchange, of course. She is also a member of the LaTeX3 team, currently focusing on PDF issues. And that's what she's going to talk about right now. So the presentation is recorded. Tom, are you ready to? Hello. Yes, I am ready. Hello, Ulrike. I think Hello. I will play the recording for you, okay? Yes, if it's fail, I can try to. <laughs> no, 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 I think it's okay. And we got it, we got it figured out. So here we go. Good day, everybody. Welcome to my talk. I want to talk about the packages tech PDF and PDF management test phase, which are two important building blocks of the latest tech PDF project, which has the goal to improve the PDF output of LaTeX. Let's start with a few remarks about PDF as a format. PDF is a page and graphic oriented format. One has very good control about the layout of a page, about fonts and font sizes, and the placement of characters. But basically, it simply describes where the ink is on a page. One knows nearly nothing about the meaning, the structure, or the reading order. HTML, on the other side, is good at structure, but doesn't give you much control over the layout. In HTML, you improve the layout control by adding lots of CSS instructions. In PDF, you improve the structure info by adding lots of tagging. I start by presenting a website which you can use to check the tags of a tagged PDF. I have prepared a small example and I will Load, upload it to show you what happens. Simply drop it. Then you can go to the editor. Then it will present you the PDF and an HTML presentation and the text on the left side. You can, for example, simply look at the PDF and you can see that it found section tag, a paragraph tag, inside the paragraph a link, and another. One can also look at the HTML, and then it shows you what it thinks about the PDF as HTML. Now, what does it mean to take a PDF? I will give you here a very short introduction in what it happens in a PDF. You see here a very simple example of a page stream. It starts with a word stream and end stream. Here we have the blue operators, our font selection operators. The first font is a point, font in 30 points, the second one in 9 points. Then we have operators which move around on the page. This here goes a bit up and to the right. Then it goes down again and down more down again. And this here are the operators which print text. Here is a word section, here is a word hello, here is a number. Now we have to mark this page stream to tag it. At first we surround the first part of the text with a marking of type H1, that means heating, with a number 0. The marking starts with a BDC and ends always with a MNC. Then we mark the second part of the text with a P operator, with a number 1, and again 
It starts with BDC and ends with EMC. And the last part of the text is tagged as artifact, as it, we want to ignore it for the structure. But again, we have the two BDC and MC, EMC markers. All these markers have to be added and numbered by page. That makes this step not very trivial, at least in Tech, where pages are built asynchronously during the compilation. Now we have to add a structure. This is done by adding lots of objects. At first, we have a root object that's always required. And this root object has a reference to a kit, which is the next which ch children in the structure. The next object is then the first struct element object from the t title of my talk. It's of type document. It has a reference to the parent. And it has a to reference to children, which come later. In the next step, we add a structure element for the healing. It too has a reference to a parent. It is referenced from the parent. And it has for the first time its, uh, its kit entry reference one of the blocks that we marked in the mark content step, the so block zero. The last object is a paragraph object, which similar structure, it too has a parent which and references its parent, and it references here the second mark content block that we have added. All together, this gives a structure which looks like this. The next step is to add much more objects, but I will spare you the details here because typically the package will simply do them and you don't need to care about this. So how do you do it in LaTeX? I want to show you now how this is done with the tech PDF package. At first, a few words about the background and the goal of the package. When I wrote the package four years ago, I was convinced that an external package is not enough. You can tag individual documents with such a package. The documentation is proof of it. But if you want to do it on a larger scale for and with normal user code, then it needs and requires new code and changes in the LaTeX kernel. So the goals of Tech PDF were to develop the basic tagging code needed for the kernel. I wanted to provide examples and test files. I wanted to identify LaTeX problems and develop stable solutions for the kernel with it. So Tech PDF is in the core a research and development tool. As such, it typically requires the newest LaTeX code, sometimes even LaTeX dev. It can still change and it concentrates on basic commands. It's not a typical user package. Which commands do the package provide? There are two basic pairs, command pairs, techpdmc begin and techmc end to create the mark content chunks as described in step one and structure commands for the structure. Typically, you use them like this. We'll 
start with a com structure and you end it. Inside the structure you mark a piece of text and then you start another structure which is ended here and where inside is a bit of mark content text too. And here is another mark content and here is a page break and in, when there is a page break you have to end such a chunk befo before the page break and restart it after the page break. How do you use tech PDF? Here a simple example document. We start by loading the PDF management test fetch package that is required. Then we activate the PDF management by using this trigger command. I will say more about this in the second part of my talk. Then you can load tech PDF. It is a normal package and it can be loaded with use package but as we are now integrating it more in the kernel we have also provided a key so it can simply be loaded by using that check in the key. Tagging must also be activated explicitly. Without it tagging won't happen. Then we add a normal preamble with your document and here is the first text. We have a section and this section is surrounded with lots of tagging commands. Then we have a paragraph with a link in it and another paragraph. Here's a link and here's a paragraph. Then you compile. With Lua LaTeX the result are the best. PDF LaTeX is quite okay, but you should hear Frank's talk first. With the other engines and backends, they work like PDF LaTeX, but they miss in real interword spaces and so are not so good in this context. You may have wondered why are there so many tagging commands around the section? and none at all around the link and the paragraph text. Well, this reflects the state of the project. The automatic tagging of paragraphs and links works now due to the work of the last months. Headings still need manual tagging or patches and the next step will be to automate this too. To find more details about the latest tech project projects at, on our website. I now come to the second part of my talk. I want to explain what the new man PDF management does and why it is required for tagging. At first I look back into the past when I started to write the tech PDF package nearly nothing PDF specific was in the kernel. Everything needed external packages or primitives, maybe colors or images or changes to the page sizes, links or even something simple like setting the PDF version. This is a problem at first because of some Backends. There are many roads to PDF and LaTeX tries to support them all. And every of this backend need different primitives. PDF LaTeX use PDF Info, Lua LaTeX has its own things uh, and XeLaTeX and DVE PS uh, have their own special commands. This means that every package who wants to support something PDF specific has to write backend drivers and there are quite a lot in LaTeX of various ages, maintenance state and covering different uh, backends. 
Tagging needs better tools. As you saw in the first part of my talk, it has to write lots of objects and uh, so the tools had to be really in LaTeX. It also needs abstracted commands. So that it doesn't have to care all the time about backend support. So we have uh, developed these tools. There are now quite a number of abstracted backend independent commands for various PDF related tasks in LaTeX. Some of them are already in the format, so LDI PDF and LDI backend. For example, we have now commands to create a new object. For this is needed to create the structure object or to set the PDF version or even to select a color. PDF management test fields extend this set. There are quite a lot more commands needed. For example, a command to create these PDC markers, commands to embed a file, commands to create a link which already contains hooks for tagging which is why the link worked in the example I showed, and commands, for example, for form fields, which I will show later. There was a second problem with the PDF tools. Primitives can clash and conflicts. Some of the primitives write to central dictionaries, and if one doesn't pay attention, one can easily produce invalid PDF. A simple example is, for example, the PDF info command. If two packages try to write a title into the, this dictionary, you end up with both titles in it, and this is invalid. The solution we developed here is a management command. It's a new command which allows you to add values to these dictionaries without producing conflicts. The command has two versions. There's a latest to array name and a expert i name, both to the same. And they replace these five primitives and the similar primitives of the other backends. For example, if you use with this command, set the title twice, then the command will take care that only one title is used at the end in the PDF. Incompatibilities. Replace really means replace here. Every package which uses one of the primitives is not compatible because they will again produce the clashes. For this reason, we uh, set up quite some safety measures. At first, the code is currently in an external test phase package and not already in LaTeX. There is an explicit trigger command to activate the central the management command. We have written quite a lot of replacements for packages and drivers which are affected by the change, for example, for HyperF or Transparent. We also wrote a number of patches for packages uh, which are affected by the incompatibility, for example, PGF and HyperXMP, which will stay until the packages themselves adapt their code. And we notified already quite a lot of maintainers if there are problems. But naturally, you can only notify package and maintainers of, uh, which are on CTAN. We don't know about all the classes uh, on universities and other places. So it is really needed that you users test and report problems so that we can uh, make the switch to the new PDF management um, without problems. At the end of my talk, I would show a few examples that uh, PDF management and the code we wrote there is not only useful for tagging, but has also other benefits. 
So first are the changes in HyperF. As I said, I wrote a new driver for HyperF and I not didn't only adapt it to the PDF management, but also looked if I could add features and requests that I have seen over the years in various places. One thing I, for example, changed is the default, are the default colors. They are now not so dramatic, nicer looking. There are also various color schemes and you can switch. For example, here one suggested by a Stack Exchange user, Dalev, and Henry Ford suggested by another user. Um, there are also more some support for uh, protocols and for non-ASCII non links. You can, for example, tell the links now that you want every link to have a HTTPS protocol and that you want uh, the code to uh, convert non-ASCII into the correct percent encoding. So if we do, for example, here with this code, the link to the town Köln, then in the uh, PDF you will get the correct code, percent encoded, and it will work. A second uh, improvement is the rotating of float pages. Rotating a page is quite easy in PDF. You only have to add a page attribute, but it's not so easy to rotate a float page because you typically simply don't know where this page is. You can do it with rather complicated label system, but with the PDF management it will simply work. You only need to add to the figure uh, this here and then this page will be rotated by 90 degrees when you look at it in the viewer. Another extension are support for PDF standards. Currently mostly A standards, but that is what the people typically need. A standard, one of the most important parts of the A standard is that you need a color profile and that the color profile must be correctly registered in the catalog. And this is done simply by using PDF standard like A to B in the declared document metadata. The documentation of the PDF management test phase bundle use the settings and pass the validity to Vera PDF. What's another code that I try to improve while working on it is uh, the code to preserve links. There's a package named PAX from Heiko Oberdijk, which works quite nicely, but only for PDF tech. It's rather old and it needs an external Java application. I updated this package. It now uses Lua tech, so it works in every tech system. And it allows you to include a graphic without losing the links. For example, here I'm including a snippet from the example from the start of the talk and as you can see the link is there and it, it's active uh, uh, and you can click on it and it will work. And at last something about form field code. The form key field code has been rewritten completely and it has been adapted to the uh, PDF 2.0. One important challenge in uh, PDF 2.0 is that form fields have to use appearances for the, to describe how they look. Appearances are small graphics embedded in a PDF. The new form field code is currently also in a test phase package. 
go here, it will probably be integrated in Hyperf at some time, or perhaps it will stay in an external package. I haven't really decided this yet. So with a farm field code, you can with a farm field code you can create nice radio buttons. The text, f the code for text field has been improved too. It has now better support for some more fonts and also, so you can try it out, but font. And, but a last warning. Appearances um, have a certain size and farm fields can change the uh, dimensions. When you do this, the PDF format will squeeze the appearance into the given dimensions. So here you get squeezed x. And if you test this with bears, then bears are test 2 and then they complain. So be careful how you use it. Thank you very much for the attention. And I hope there are questions. Thank you, Ulrike. Uh, you already have a first question by Paolo Freda in the chat. Uh, <laughs> Paolo is fast. Um, he asked why section commands are not already tagged. There, well, the, there are two reasons. At first, sec tagging a section is quite easy, actually. It's only two lines of code. You need to change start section and you need to change x set. Those are two internal commands in LaTeX. And then it will work in the standard classes. The problem is that um, there are lots of packages and classes which overwrite or patch these commands. There are classes which change overwrite simply start section, some change exact, and some change both. And so we have the same problem as we have with the PDF management that we need to build a safety net to avoid that we get incompatible. And the second reason why this isn't tagged yet is that if you have to change section, we are thinking that we should also improve the section commands so that they get more features and the features and that people don't no longer have to patch them all the time because they're missing stuff there. So it will take a bit time to get uh, section and commands correctly. Uh, everything. <laughs> now bears are unharmed. They are quite uh, flexible and simply pop out again if they get uh, released from the fountains. Yes, what's more has right. There are quite a lot of things to do to get this right. Yeah. Something? No more questions? No more questions? Well, in this case, thank you again, Ulrike, and I'm sure that uh, people will be able to ask more questions after fun, uh, Frank's talk, which is in 15 minutes. So <laughs> I suggest we just start on time so that people who meant to join at that time can can see the whole talk. So that's 15 minutes from now. Okay. Thank you very much.